This app in the App Store is making two hundred thousand dollars every month, and I copied this game without writing a single line of code. With only one AI tool that I'm about to show you, we will build the entire game app. And let me tell you this: this is not just any video. Besides showing you how to build the game, I'm also going to be showing you how to connect it to Stripe, so you can start right away with making money. Starting a new project always feels like standing at the edge of a blank canvas. You know it's going to turn into something cool, but right now it's just ideas and potential. This early stage is all about setting a strong foundation, because the assets we create here are what the entire game will be built around. Good visuals and audio aren't just nice extras; they help set the tone, the energy, and the first impressions players are going to have. So the first thing we need to do is create the core assets that will help shape the game. I will start by heading over to ChatGPT and asking it to generate some 2D sprites for a 2D platformer-style game. Specifically, I want a main character sprite that feels simple and recognizable, a version of that character equipped with a jetpack for later gameplay mechanics, and a set of obstacle sprites. I also make sure to ask for multiple variations of the obstacles, so we have some visual diversity as players move through the level. Having a few different obstacles right from the start makes the world feel more dynamic and keeps the gameplay from getting too repetitive too quickly. Once the basic set is generated, I'll follow up by asking for a second version of the character. This time, I want it to feel more premium, like an upgraded character players can eventually unlock. Even at this early stage, thinking ahead about premium content gives the game a longer lifespan and adds motivation for players to keep progressing. Now that the actual visual groundwork is coming together, it's time to think about the sound. Audio plays a huge role in setting the pace and feel of an endless runner, so I am going to stay here in ChatGPT and ask it to generate a background music track. We are going to specifically ask for something loopable with a sci-fi endless runner game. That matches the fast-paced style of the game. After everything is generated, I'm going to download all the assets: the character sprites, the obstacles, the premium character version, and the audio track. With these core pieces ready, we have everything we need to start building the first version of the game. Starting off, the goal is to lay down the foundation for how the game actually plays. Let's begin by heading over to Rosebud and ask it to create a 2D side scroller, something simple and similar to Geometry Dash, using sprites for all the assets. At first, Rosebud tries to make it in 3D instead of 2D, so it takes a few extra prompts to get it back on track. After pushing through that, we finally get a basic side scroller up and running. Nothing fancy yet, but it is a solid starting point. Next, I want to tweak how the player starts out. Right now, I want something a little more dynamic. So let's ask Rosebud to make the player start floating in the middle of the screen and gradually fall over time. When I tap or click the left mouse button, the character should jump or float upward. I don't like how it works in Geometry Dash. Rosebud adjusted the player's starting position, and now the character spawns in the center, floating as expected. Moving on, I want to bring in some basic UI, and to make that happen, let's ask Rosebud to add a user interface element that shows how many lines the player has left, and style it similarly to how the score is displayed. Here, you can see that Rosebud updates the UI and adds a working lives counter to the screen. After that, it's time to set up the game flow a little better. I ask for a main menu and a loading screen before players actually jump into the gameplay. Rosebud builds a basic main menu that loads when the game starts. Now that we have the menu, we have to start thinking ahead. Let's ask Rosebud to add a new button to the main menu called Character Select. Let's tell the AI agent that when it's pressed, it should open a character selection menu we'll set up later. Right after that, Rosebud added the button to the main menu as requested. Following that, I'm going to ask for a placeholder character selection window. It just needs two options for now: one for the current character, and another one that will unlock later with an activation code. That prompted Rosebud to build the dedicated window. Right now, it's simple, but it gives us a spot to expand on later. With the framework mostly in place, we can now move over to assets. I'll upload a new character here. Then we will ask Rosebud to replace the default cube character with a new character sprite we created. Once the visuals are swapped out, the movement needs an update too. I will ask Rosebud to adjust the player mechanics. Instead of rolling around, the character should stay upright, always facing right, and simply move forward. Rosebud updates the player movement accordingly. Finally, I want the environment to start feeling more polished. 
What I'm going to do is ask Rosebud to use the ground sprite and tile it across the bottom of the level. Same thing for the ceiling, using the ceiling sprite and repeating it across the top. Rosebud updates the environment, bringing in the new ground, the ceiling, and obstacle sprites. And somewhere along the way, Rosebud also automatically integrates a few additional obstacle variations, even though I didn't specifically ask for it. So from this point on, we'll just work with those extras already included. Now that the core gameplay is set up, it's time to start polishing everything to make the game feel a lot more complete and professional. First, I want to work on improving the environment sprites. Right now, the ground looks a bit oversized and the ceiling needs a quick adjustment. I'm going to ask Rosebud to scale the ground sprite down to a more reasonable size and flip the ceiling sprite so it lines up properly. After that, the environment looks a lot better. The ground is sized more precisely and the ceiling is flipped the right way. Next up, I want to add some feedback when the player takes damage. I will ask Rosebud to introduce a subtle camera shake and a quick right flash on the screen whenever the player gets hit. This gives the game more impact and makes taking damage feel a lot more noticeable. Rosebud adds both effects. The screen now shakes slightly and the red flash triggers on impact. After polishing the visuals a bit, we can now shift focus back to gameplay. I want the speed of the game to gradually increase as the player scores points. Let's tell Rosebud to change the logic so that for every 10 points the player earns, the movement speed jumps up by 100. That prompt updates the system and now the game feels like it gets more intense the longer you survive. Moving on, I want to make the obstacle spawning a little more interesting. Right now, it's too predictable, so I asked Rosebud to randomize the boulder spawns. Let them show up anywhere across the axis. For the regular obstacles, I want to mix things up too. Some should flip and spawn near the ceiling, while others should stay on the floor as its original stay. After updating the logic, the obstacle placement feels a lot more dynamic and unpredictable, which is exactly what we need to keep the gameplay from feeling repetitive. Once the spawning is tightened up, let's go back to refine the ground visuals even more. I ask Rosebud to slightly overlap the ground sprites so they blend together seamlessly. After this adjustment, the ground looks much smoother with no obvious gaps between the tiles. And finally, to add a little more polish to player movement, I want to introduce jump particles. I'll tell Rosebud to create a particle effect that emits downward whenever the player jumps. You can see here that Rosebud added the jump particles and positioned them neatly near the jetpack, included the right orientation so the effect feels natural during gameplay. Now we can finally say that the core gameplay and environment are working the way we want. This is a good time to start adding a few extra layers to make the game feel more complete. This next part is all about giving players something to work towards, unlockable content, a simple purchase system, and finally adding the background music to bring the whole experience together. It's these little things that start making the project feel more like a real playable game rather than just a basic prototype. So let's dive into it. First, let's head over to the assets and upload the premium character sprite we created earlier. I'll ask Rosebud to add this the character into the character selection system. It should show up as an option and if the player picks it, they'll be able to start the game with that character. No changes needed to the player settings, just making sure it swaps out correctly when selected. Rosebud now updates the system and here you go. The premium character shows up properly in the selection menu. Next, I want to add a way to actually unlock that premium character. Let's inform Rosebud to modify the selection logic so that the second character starts off locked. It should only be usable if the player enters an unlock code. For now, the code is set to unlock prem. On top of that, I am going to ask for a purchase button next to the premium character that, when clicked, copies a specific payment link to the clipboard. Right now, both the unlock system and the purchase button functionality is present. After setting up the basic unlock system, we're now going over to Stripe to create the payment link itself. I'm going to log into Stripe, create a new product, add all the necessary details, and then generate a payment link that players can use to buy access to the premium character. Once the Stripe link is ready, I ask Rosebud to update the purchase button so I point to the new link instead of the placeholder. The new link we're going to use is buy.stripe.com slash test. And after the update, the button is now hooked up correctly. Finally, to round everything out, I'm going to upload the background music track we generated earlier. Then I will ask Rosebud to add the audio into the game and make sure it loops indefinitely during gameplay. 
After that, the background music plays continuously, giving the whole game a much more polished vibe. And just like that, we've gone from a blank screen to a fully working 2D platformer, complete with a character selection system, unlockable content, payment integration, polished environment, and a looping background track to tie it all together. And it's kind of crazy how much you can build today without needing a huge team or months of coding. Just by using the right AI tools, a few good props, and a bit of persistence, you can take an idea and turn it into something real and playable. If you made it this far, thank you for following along through all the builds, the fixes, and the polishing stages. Hopefully this gave you a real look at what it's like behind the scenes, not just the highlights, but the whole process of figuring things out as you go. And if you want to see more builds like this, more AI walkthroughs, or different kinds of projects, make sure to stick around. There's a lot more coming. I'll see you in the next one.